If you're like me, in which case I'm very sorry, you've probably heard about various video games that were planned at some point, but for whatever reason ended up not releasing. There's Super Mario Spikers, Star Wars 1313, Telltale Stranger Things, Sonic Extreme, Sonic Extreme, and even those four Mega Man games that were all cancelled at once. When I think about these, I think of their cancellations as something that happened in the past. Something where I can't get my hopes up because I know them for the reason that they were canned. And then something happened that made me think about all this. For context, Night in the Woods is one of my favorite games, hell, one of my favorite narrative experiences ever. I used to play through the game annually every fall, before I did get tired of that and took a two year long break. I adore the game for its art, aesthetic, atmosphere, characters, and especially the writing. It really helps to propel the feeling of this world being real, that these characters are complex human beings with distinct struggles, and all that with incorrect grammar. When it came out that what was left of that game's development team founded a new studio and were working on a new game called Revenant Hill, oh boy was I excited. After having had previous experience with the developer's work, I was prepared as hell to see what Scott and Bethany, as well as a bunch of fresh meat artists had cooking. This has easily become one of my most anticipated games ever. We write the year of 1919. Revenant Hill was set to start Twigs, a cat whose old home has been burned down, taking up residence in a wet log in the Pennsylvanian area. But after an owl starts charging rent, Twigs aspires to become a witch's familiar to make ends meet. While there's a general unrest, implied to result in the historical General Steel Strike of 1919. The game would follow in the footsteps of Night in the Woods gameplay-wise, as in there wouldn't be any gameplay except live platforming and it's just more of a visual novel. Though there's no real telling about how the writing was supposed to come out, considering there is only one singular publicly available line of dialogue. If I get killed doing this, you better make a real big statue about it. Other than that, we can only rely on descriptions on store pages to give us an idea on the specifics of what we're doing in the game, though those specifics aren't very specific. They pretty much just list off a myriad of vague things and odd jobs Twix would or could do over the events of the story, seeming to mix the paranormal into normal life. Artistically, the game adopts Scott Benson's recognizable visual style, utilizing simple flat shapes as well as a general orange-brownish color palette, reminiscent of autumn. Actually, the game's general aesthetic seems to be based around the season of fall, which I'm a complete sucker for. As you can see, there really wasn't a lot to go off the game when it was announced, but the hype was still on. And then... Only half a year after it was announced, I woke up one morning and decided to browse articles on my phone, immediately leading me to one about the cancellation of Revenant Hill. I don't think I can put into words just how much this caught me off guard. The game was cancelled for a really good reason though. As it turns out, the health of various members of the development team were at risk including that of Scott Benson, who was a really important key member on the team. I am really disappointed the game got cancelled, but damn, is there a reasonable reason behind it. Since it got cancelled, there haven't really been any more publicly shown off developments. Just the same teaser trailer, screenshots, and maybe the occasional drop listing for the Glory Society, not like that's worth anything anymore considering, you know. This situation did make me think about how much we take the games that actually come out for granted. Like think about all of your most anticipated games. 
Any of those could be cancelled at any time. There's no telling what could happen, as unpredictable circumstances always have a chance of occurring. I can't really think of many games that were cancelled recently. Perhaps it's simply because a lot don't even make it to announcement. So, I took to Discord to ask people if they were anticipating games that hit the chopping block. Genuine answers were scarce, but I did get a couple. One of the first answers I got was Silent Hills. I never played a Silent Hill game, neither did I get a chance to play PT, Silent Hills is a playable teaser, as I got my PS4 too late for that. Basically, Silent Hills was supposed to be a reboot of the classic horror game franchise with Hideo Kojima of Metal Gear Solid fame and Guillermo del Toro, who made that one movie where a woman fucked a fish or something, I don't know, I haven't watched it yet. Amendment. While editing the video, I have actually gotten around to seeing The Shape of Water. I could make an easy fetish joke here, but... I'm not going to, the movie's just genuinely great. I'm sorry, now back to the video. Those who played PT have done nothing but praise it to pieces, and it is refreshing to see a horror game go viral that doesn't try too hard to appeal to 5 year olds. However, the game got cancelled because Konami is Konami and thus is just allergic to good things. So they had to make things hellish for Kojima for no good reason. Another response I got to my question was Five Nights at Freddy's Plus, a fan-made remake to the funny Markiplier game that was going to be officially released. From my research, I've gathered that it did gain its fair share of criticism, but with its new take on the original, it got a lot of people excited for it. And then something happened. More specifically, Quitter happened. Yup, according to my research, the game was cancelled because a pretty harmless tweet and an equally as harmless response snowballed into a situation involving harassment and spreading of gore that people did in the name of the developer outside of his control. Another amendment. If I had a nickel for every time a fan-made remake of the original Five Nights at Freddy's got cancelled or at least had its development severely affected by a situation regarding spreading or on Twitter, I would have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Messed up too. Like seriously, what is wrong with people? Anyways, I'm sorry. Back to not Twitter. And just like that, a work of art in the making poofed away. That's the thing with solo projects. When one developer is out of the picture for whatever reason, how would the project even carry on? Is it supposed to be finished by the other zero people that worked on it? In the end, this goes to show how we take all art for granted. There are massive efforts behind things like video games to the point that it's wildly impressive that as many games release in the first place as they do. Weapon Until may have been cancelled, but I'm just glad we managed to get something like Night in the Woods in the first place. Even the projects that didn't make it deserve to be remembered and preserved. The work that took the developers this far should be recognized, as art isn't just the piece itself, but it also encompasses the effort behind it. The work may have been lost, but not forgotten. Revenant Hill may have died, so we better make a real big statue about it.